Whether you're already well into your journey of 3D modeling, or you're on the sidelines waiting for the right time to make your first donut, all of us will sooner or later face a problem when it comes to learning 3D modeling. The problem is that 3D modeling is not just one skill, but about a hundred different skills all wrapped into one. And that's something that can be extremely intimidating and overwhelming. A lot of people get stuck or quit if they can't manage that. So to efficiently learn 3D, you gotta accept one fact. You can't learn everything. Your time and energy are limited, so mastering all of the concepts of 3D modeling will take way too much time. So here's some tips to help you solve this problem. My first suggestion would be to follow your passion. There's probably a specific reason or a specific thing that you want to make, which is why you got interested in 3D modeling. For me, it was to model female anime characters. I know, how very original of me. So that's the first thing I started making. Of course, I did learn the general controls of Blender first, but that did not take a day. So after learning the basic controls, how to navigate the program and a few hotkeys, I decided the fastest way to reach my goal was to directly learn from the people already doing just that or something very similar. These were the two channels I remember from that time. I just jumped right into replicating what I could from their time lapses rather than watching more general Blender videos. Now, while that was challenging it was not impossible and I do believe it was the right choice at least for my path. Obviously I'm not saying that this is for everybody. For example I had a friend that started learning Blender at the same time and he went the full Donut Man route. And that's okay too if that's what you prefer or if it's more tailored to your goals. But here's the advantage of the route that I took. And the obvious one is that I'm already making progress towards what I got into this program for, making hot anime girls. And that kept me motivated because that's what interested me. I'm not interested in making donuts or kitchen countertops. So between random things and things that I'm actually interested in, the choice is obvious. Many people underestimate the role of managing your motivation so that you can keep working on a skill long term. Or even when you first start out, because if you're not interested in it to begin with, who's to say that you won't like drop it after two hours, you know? Now here's the thing, both motivation and discipline are important. So you gotta do the things you like, but at the same time, you still have to have the discipline to do it consistently and also learn the fundamentals that go along with 3D modeling. Because it's not all fun and games, but if you can have both motivation and discipline, then why not have both? So when I followed along with those two channels I mentioned earlier, I was getting the best of both worlds because I was also learning the fundamentals of Blender and the fundamentals of character modeling. Because of course they would go through like modeling the mesh, then after that they would create the UVs, they would texture it, they would rig it. So I efficiently picked up the fundamentals that were necessary for my specific niche. Because the thing is, if you follow along like that, you'll only go as deep into the fundamentals as you need to. So that saves you a bit of time and you also avoid learning skills that you won't end up using like for example geometry nodes, right? You're not going to use that in character modeling usually. And leading off with what you like makes the tedious parts more palatable. Because naturally once I modeled my first character, I was actually excited to do for example the rigging because I wanted to see my creation moving around and stuff. Now that leads me to the next tip to streamline your learning. Try using that momentum from what you're interested in to go start to finish along the entire process. What does that mean? Okay, so back to my example, I'm a beginner who learned how to create a face slash head mesh. Would it make more sense for me to go search up random unrelated tutorials and go for like bite-sized dopamine hits, shallowly learning a variety of different things, or should I instead narrow that down to skills that stack on top of each other and propel me towards my end goal? So that's the next step in all of this madness. Complete a relatively fast version of your end goal. Don't get too caught up with mastering things just yet. Just make sure you get through everything and cross the finish line, which in this example is to get a full character exported into a game engine with basic functionality. But obviously replace that with whatever you are really interested in. The first time is not going to be perfect and it doesn't need to be. So don't get too hung up on it and don't spend too much time on it. What's important is that you're narrowing down what you need to do and carving a path for yourself. 
This also goes back to motivation and discipline because you will have to troubleshoot, you will have to problem solve along the way when learning all these little things that are in the way of your end goal. And that can get tedious. So again, having that extra boost from your natural interests helps. One specific thing I got stuck on in my first time is the export process. Of course, there's a million different meshes in your scene which have to be merged down because I found out that certain functionality in the game engine is only available if you have no more than one mesh. So okay, why don't I just select everything and join it all into one object? Oh wait, that doesn't work because I have to first apply the modifiers, I have to apply them in a certain order, I have to make sure all the transforms are applied or else once it's imported it's gonna look messed up, and a bunch of other specific technical little details. Quite annoying, but I did work on my problem solving and eventually figured it out. Whatever you do, just make sure you persevere and complete that end goal. If you're a chronic non-finisher, you will eventually have to face your demons to push past those plateaus if you want to achieve greater things. Now when you do manage to hit your goal, which congratulations by the way because that's not easy, what do you do? Well, that's the fun part. You go back and you do it again. Yeah, but this time you go deeper into those skills needed along the way and improve them to a higher level. This is important because it forces you to critique yourself, to take criticism from others and compare where you're at now versus where the pros are at. But again, how do we optimize this? How do we remove the noise? Because aren't there some skills worth mastering more than others? Again, our time and effort is a resource, so we want to make sure we spend it on the right things. So that brings us to our next point. Skill distribution. Even within a specific blender niche, there are one or two skills that you want to be the master of. And like we mentioned earlier, you can't master everything. It just takes too much time. It would be much wiser to master one or two things and then bring everything else that supports those two things to a decent level. Now, one 3D modeling skill I would say is important for 99% of users is poly modeling. This is when you manually create vertices and faces and move them around to create objects. This is a must have because most things, especially character modeling, needs this at a high level. Not only that, but poly modeling naturally leads you down the road to learn other fundamental 3D skills, such as working with modifiers, especially subdivision surface modifier. You'll learn how to create seams and UV maps, which is important important for texturing, you'll learn about stuff like normals, you'll learn what is considered good topology and the methods to create such. It is also crucial for building your art and design skills because by moving around vertices in three dimensions, you're building spatial awareness, absolutely necessary for creating good forms, mimicking art styles, and overall being able to turn the things in your imagination into actual creations. That's why the first thing I ever learned to do when I hopped onto character modeling is creating a head mesh. Not from a sculpt, but from raw poly modeling. It did seem like a crazy thing at the time to do this first, but after a few tries it was not as difficult as expected and it was well worth it. Now I get, like, faces may be pretty intimidating as a first task, so one thing I recommend to most beginners looking to start poly modeling in order to make characters, start with hands because you'll see how easy it is to make complex objects with basic shapes. Then you also learn how to move and extrude points, fill in faces, and join separate parts together. Literally, you learn most of the needed basic functions just by making a hand or a foot. And there's no harm in repeatedly practicing face and hand meshes. For me, it is probably one of the specific aspects I redid the most, but I do learn something new every time. Like, I've never not made a new face mesh even though it takes a couple of hours or so. I've never went back and been like, Oh yeah, that was a complete waste of my time. Why did I do this again? It's always been like, yeah, this is a lot of progress since the last time I did it. Plus, it's a highly transferable skill. And then, apart from that staple, your niche probably has one or two really important skills where you're aiming to be as proficient in them as you can. It's just that important to that specific thing and that's what people who consume your niche are looking for. Along with a handful of skills that are not as important, but important enough to where you'd want to get them at a decent level. For example, again with the 3D gacha anime characters. What is something that they specialize in? Number one is probably character design, and then the second is probably animation. 
This is probably the most true of an example I'd give here is Zenless Zone Zero. We've been using that game a lot here on this channel. But character designs are crucial in gacha games because people drop lots of money to acquire these characters, and they've been pretty much primed to expect nothing but the best in terms of character design. Animations are important and a key part of Zenless Zone Zero too because it's an action game, and also because their art style depends a lot on how lively the animations are and how convincing the expressions are. Those are the skills they spend the most time working on as it brings the most value to their niche. And then you got things like texturing and topology, which they are important, but they are a lower priority. Like texturing, you don't you definitely don't need to go as hard because in the 3D anime style, it's not that detailed. Plus, it's kind of carried by the shaders. Topology in these models are great. They're efficient, but they're not like amazing seventh wonder of the world level topology. Oftentimes, they cut a lot of corners. Sometimes you can tell they just wanted to be efficient with it. They just wanted to get the job done. So that's why you have to identify what it is in your niche that you have to focus on. Even within similar niches, it varies, right? Because for example, rigging a 3D anime game character versus rigging a 3D anime VTuber. When you rig a VTuber character, you don't even need all the bells and whistles that come with rigging. I'm talking about having like a full IK FK setup with a switch and like custom shapes for all your bones. Yeah, you don't need that for a VTuber. You don't even need to have animation skills. You just need to be able to weight paint the armature because the end product will not need animations. They're just gonna animate it by tracking it to their body. And notice I'm definitely not saying neglect those other skills other than your most prioritized skills, no. Picking the right secondary skills to learn can exponentially improve the quality of your models it's just all about the cost benefit analysis. There are a lot of important skills where you can get 80% of its value with only 20% of the effort. And we all know it takes a lot longer to get level 99 in one skill than it is to get level 40 on a bunch of different skills. So I'll give you some examples. Shading. Shading is really important in the 3D anime art style, but if you know even just a simple two-toned tune shader with an inverted hull outline, even if you just copy that node setup from a video, you've pretty much got most of the art style right there. And you could spend another 20 hours learning what the nodes actually do and add things like noise, a rim light, which do make it slightly better for more time. So whether you need that for your workflow is up to you. Anime face shadows. Not gonna lie, it took me a few hours to get this face shadow setup that you usually see in anime gacha games where they had the Rembrandt's triangle. But there's a method where you could just use sphere normals and apply it to your head and you'll have clean shading just minus the Rembrandt's triangle shadow. But instead of hours, it takes minutes and that's possibly a lot more worth it. So distribute your time and effort wisely, and of course, that will be specific to your personal goal. And my last tip for both fast and quality learning is to reference 3D models that are the same as the ones that you're trying to do. And it can be more obvious than that. That's why recently I've been making a lot of videos looking at 3D anime game models that you can download for free. Such an easy thing to abuse, just download your favorite games models and suck them dry of all the secrets that they're putting out there. Video link in the description for more details on how to do that. Referencing with specificity is the fastest shortcut to bridging the gap between your models and the professional models that are being used in the industry. Anyways, I hope this video defogged some of the noise that can go on in the infinitely large world of trying to learn 3D and gave you a little clarity. I think it is important to note that when I first started out, I actually wasn't that interested in 3D modeling. And I did have my doubts because, again, it's a big sphere and there is a lot of crap to cram into your brain. But again, it was a matter of focusing on a few things at a time, doing what I liked, not worrying too much about what I think I needed to learn, but just watching and copying practical workflows. And over time, I noticed that all of those scary things did get picked up. Now, obviously, I am not claiming that I have mastered anything or even come close, but at the very least, I kept my motivation and haven't quit yet. And I think it is safe to say that I'm actually more interested in 3D modeling than when I first started. For even more help, you can check out the Discord to hang out with like-minded individuals, ask questions, and even showcase and get feedback on your creations. Bye-bye, I'll see you in the next one. Good night.